developed world, we consume and waste more food than anywhere else, while at the same time over a billion people worldwide cannot afford enough food to eat. This is largely because our governments enforce trading policies which restrict many third world nations from feeding themselves. Europe and the United States provide over $300 billion in subsidies to domestic agriculture every year, while exporting excess products at artificially low prices. These exports have put thousands of third world farmers out of business, fueling mass urbanisation due to the lack of development in rural areas. In Africa, urbanisation is happening faster than anywhere else in the world, with two thirds of the continent predicted to be living in cities within the next 10 years. In the West African nation of Sierra Leone, most people have been employed in agriculture, but many farmers are unable to compete with the cheap foreign imports and have been driven out of business. As the UK, the other powerful nations, continue to strengthen their own farmers, their surpluses have been dumped in Africa. And that is not helping our own farmers because the potentials of those farmers are taken away by that excess which is, which is brought into the country. This is driving thousands of young people into the capital Freetown in the hope of finding work and opportunity. Freetown is the capital of one of the poorest countries on earth, and over 60% of the city's infrastructure was destroyed during the country's 10-year civil war. The reality for many young people in Freetown is a tough life in the slums, with few chances of finding a decent job. The encounter problems are because, you see, the entire country is jobless. Just like if you money, you get a job, money is not for you to get along, so I do. Yeah, this is Crew Bay, one of the poorest slums in Freetown. And um, people here live in absolute squalor. Freetown's infrastructure is unable to cope under the weight of new arrivals. In Crew Bay, the community often floods as rubbish flows down the river, blocking the drainage. The entire community, they flood. They flood in water, they enter the houses there. If you come here in season, you see the kind of people they suffer, you can so you for where they live here. Most residents of Crew Bay spend the wet season knee deep in dirty water, and it's the children who suffer the most. In Sierra Leone, one out of every six children die before their fifth birthday. In Crew Bay, it's one in every four. The sudden surge in global food prices has left many parents unable to feed their children, and the malnutrition leaves many children too weak to fight off infection. Many of the residents of Crew Bay used to be farmers who moved to the city to find work and have nowhere else to go. Despite the dire conditions, they still managed to find ways to sustain life. Like this project, run by a group of local young men, which is providing clean water for the whole community. Because people in this community, they suffer by water business. This water, now water will be the common are a very small hole. We decide for dig them, for improve and well. Make the community people learn water not be the problem. There are many examples like this, of young people using their initiative with little resources to have a positive impact on society. But opportunities are few, and youth workers are becoming increasingly concerned about the long-term effects of unemployment and urbanisation on youth. Unemployment is a very serious risk, and especially for young people, they have the zest, they have the power, they have so much energy, and if that energy is not converted for positive development, then it will have negative implications on society. To fight the boredom and frustration as well as bury the trauma of the past, many young people are turning to drugs. So man, so man they live in life at the ghetto, they spend time there, if not time you learn for courage himself, if not power in the car. So man, so man get no the part in life when they back because you know my courage himself in mind. I start to take my Iwana because I get seen already disturb me in my mind. Any do they get through they suffer. Pass no more we can't smoke for all courage yourself. If you know that people um, don't come up fast type and fetch back ten years ago. So now I let that be again. And this is why I even killed self, my sister, when a belong man, the mass mass in belly say die. If you are young, unemployed, you either live in a squalor or go around begging, you get disillusioned, you go into drugs. So a young man, physically strong, unemployed with drugs, well, his psychological status is very, very fragile. Dr. Nahim is the country's only psychiatrist, 
and runs Sierra Leone's only psychiatric hospital. He believes the growing drug culture is causing the majority of mental illness in the country. During the last eight years, 80% 80 of all admissions are for drug-induced psychotic disorders, whereas 20 years ago it was 10%. So as you can see, drug abuse is playing or has played a major role to the development of psychiatric illnesses in youths and young people in the country. With mental health services in the country desperately underfunded, there are few places for drug addicts and the mentally ill to find help. The City of Rest is Freetown's only rehabilitation centre. It is run by two pastors who have dedicated their lives to helping drug addicts and the mentally ill. We have so many reasons why some people go into drugs. Some because they lack love at home. Many of them because they are idle, they don't have job to do, they don't engage themselves doing anything. The mind is idle. The idle mind is the workshop of the devil. Do you think there's anybody who is beyond help? I don't believe. Because I am not doing it. The God I serve is able abundantly to do everything. So I have never given up somebody here. I don't give up anybody. What do you will be to the future of this country? Well, we face destruction. Because the leaders for tomorrow will be destroyed. The potential consequences of a young generation jobless and frustrated is not lost on the people of Sierra Leone. In the early 90s, the corrupt government took away free education and the subsequent uprisings soon turned into all-out war as the frustrations of the youth were manipulated by warlords with their own agendas. During the 10 years of carnage that followed, thousands of young men, women and children were recruited into both rebel and government forces. Many of them were kidnapped from their homes and forced to fight. I was 16 years when I, I was captured. So it was not easy when we were in jungle, it was not easy. We we'll go to villages and adopt kids, give them gun to fight. I was having a gun, but I didn't kill anybody. The war ended in 2002, but today many still live on the streets, unable to reconcile with their families and communities. These girls, these children that were left behind, had no homes, had no hope to make a future work except to go into the streets, to either prostitute or make a living out of the streets. The corruption still exists in government, but slowly things are improving. Recognising the urgency of the situation, the government is trying to encourage agricultural projects to provide work for the youth. But progress is slow, and many young people are becoming increasingly impatient. Well, what did the government do for help the youth in Asaru? Like, we will not understand. We will not see nothing. They just talk, talk, lie, 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 lie. Yes. Nothing will not get at this point. Nothing will not get. Is there anyone in government who you feel represents the voice of the young people in Syria? <laughs> We don't have any with the youth. We don't have any representative. It is our problem. I think this frustration is just so great for these guys. They've got energy, they've got ability, they've got potential, but they've got no way of really exercising it. American and European agricultural corporations are able to dominate the global food market with the support of our governments. Through subsidies, import tariffs and dumping surplus products, we have been crippling third world agriculture for decades. This not only stunts economic growth, it also fuels urbanisation, unemployment and social tension, as seen in Sierra Leone. The British government gives millions of pounds in foreign aid to the third world every year, but without reforming our trading policies, our government still continues to sustain the very poverty we claim to be ending. All these promises about trade policies, about trying to make sure we, we make poverty history, I think we've been just talking. We have really been, and we have talked for too long. There will be no time in the human history when all of us will be equal. There will ever remain rich countries, there will ever remain poor countries. I think what we need to do is to reasonably reduce the extent of that divide so that people don't die of hunger, for example. I think it's criminal for a human being born in this world of abundance to die of starvation. It should be a moral outrage because it's a disgrace to the human race.